start to put tension on my string drawback, I was like, okay, I'm it. It's him. You can look at the horns when he's dead. I'm, I'm in, you know, in the zone. Let the arrow go. It's perfect. Uh, so they lose their front doors. Yeah, they start. Yeah, that's how you know. Went about five, ten more yards. You probably went ten yards. Stepped in, we tried to get back up. I saw him pull up. We rushed four years broad that night. We got like 156 and something like that. And then the next day, we came up to 153 even. You're listening to the White Cat Outdoors podcast, bringing you to the table where we talk about the outdoors. What's up, guys? Episode 92. Uh, Nick and Tom are both here. Hey, what's going on, Ed? Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, and uh, Nick didn't really give me the rundown on what we're talking about. He quick I mentioned... a little bit. You said, like, two words. Hunting rain. Yep, two words. Nailed it. Yeah, that's... I mean, it's been talked about quite a bit the last couple of months with how much trouble we've had with the amount of rain we've been getting. And looking into the next week... We're continuing to get that rain, and it's looking like maybe opening day could be a rainy morning, which we're used to. Mm-hmm. But that's not going to stop us from hunting, so we figured we'd go over a few things to uh, pay attention to for hunting in the rain and a couple uh, tips, I guess, if you will. I'm sure they will. Yeah. Well, I think the first thing we should start talking about is the amount of rain, because I won't archery hunt in a torrential downpour. Yeah, it definitely comes down to the like how hard it's raining because if it's like a little more than a little, I I won't archery. Hunt. I'll rifle hunt and most yeah. anything, but when it comes to bow hunting, I definitely I don't want to say I'm like a fair weather hunter because I'm not a bitch, but mm-hmm. I, I try to th- You're a bitch. I, yeah, I I just try to think more ethically on that side with a bow because sometimes even if you do have a good hit, they don't bleed that much sometimes, so it's. It can be tough to follow them if it's rain if it's completely downpouring. Yeah, yeah it's going to wash it, it the makes trail it, away. Yeah, it makes it tough real quick. So, I just I don't hundred percent agree with people that are just too tough to come out yeah. of the woods. <clears throat> it's like a downpour. I I, I agree, but yeah. I think if um, you have a light rain, it actually yeah makes the blood trail easier to follow. Well, I guess what I was getting on too. Tom and I were not talking about this topic directly, um, but on the way over, Tom's actually considering getting. Uh, a blood or not a bloodhound, but some sort of hound to track deer, mm-hmm. uh, wounded deer to be specific. And I think if you are hunting in the rain and there's that chance of maybe rain after, you know, like if it's in the forecast, I think if it's legal, having a contact in your phone for a tracking dog is a very yeah, useful and important tool, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, because a, a deer or a dog can track deer even if a blood trail is totally washed away. Yeah. So, yeah, it doesn't need to see anything. Yeah. So that's a big. Um, I guess tip, just make sure that if it's legal in your area, know where your tracking dogs are. Which I can't believe it took PA so long to make it legal. That's, yeah. That just blows my especially mind. Especially that, that it's on a leash. Like, it's not like you're letting them just free range. Yeah. Like, you wouldn't down, like, down south, you can hunt deer with dogs. Yeah, and that's what I was just going to say. You're not hunting with it. You're, you have a wounded animal, and you're just trying to recover it rather than let it go to waste. So yeah. why would you not allow hunters to use that resource when there's people around that know how to do it? Mm-hmm. Why not do it? I, I just don't. I never understood that with PA. But I think finally, there's a lot of underground they, deer tracking going on. To be honest with you, because yeah. it was amazing the amount of people that already had dogs, well trained dogs. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was one thing I remember. Like, cause it was. It's only been I think two or maybe three years that they've I been think around. It's three. Yeah. And I remember as soon as it was legalized, all of a sudden there was guys with tons of experience, dogs yeah. already trained. Mm-hmm. So it's been being done, but I we can't tell you to do it if it's not legal yeah but i'm wondering is there any states that are it is illegal i don't know i know pa is always on the end of every yeah yeah, with their hunting laws which is weird because we have so many hunters but we're always the last state to do something yeah include sunday hunting sunday hunting yeah still working on that one but yeah i i honestly don't know the legality of it in other states but if pa did it finally then i'm sure pretty much every other state you're allowed to do it yeah Probably, but we can't speak for that 100%. Uh, one thing, too, like if you're not going to hunt, you know, like in a torrential downpour, I think being there right as that rain stops is huge, though. Mm-hmm. You know, if you have the ability to be 
like in your stand as that rain's stopping. I'm not saying sit all day and pouring down rain, but if you, you know, are checking the forecast and it's supposed like a radar showing that it's supposed to stop in an hour, I think it's a good idea to get out in your stand and be there yeah. when that rain stops because that triggers so much movement from deer. Mm-hmm. I mean, same thing as humans, like, you know, on, on a dreary, rainy day, you just don't feel like doing anything. As soon as that sun pops out, you're ready to go do something, get out of the house. Yeah. And deer are the same exact way. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I had... Um, a couple of years ago, I killed a buck opening day right after a nasty rainstorm that kept a lot of hunters in mm-hmm. that night. It was rained all night and into the morning, and I killed my buck right. I mean, the rain hadn't been stopped for more than forty five minutes, and it was just one of those perfect. I'm, try, I'm saying perfect storm, <laughs> but like literally perfect and figuratively perfect storm. Yeah. Anyways, it was like that rain stopped right when peak deer movement would be in the early morning. Mm -hmm. So it was just a combination of everything. But I remember um, talking to a lot of guys that actually skipped out that opening morning because it was such shitty weather. Yeah. And it really paid off for me. I had saw three bucks that morning and my buck was dead by eight o'clock. So it was like pretty, um, it was like, I mean, great morning to be in the woods. Yeah. So. And I think that like the reverse side of that coin, if you're out in the woods and it starts to lightly rain, I think that does deter a lot of guys that, that are in the middle of a sit. They'll start to come out, and it's kind of tough with bow hunting because you don't want to obviously shoot at a jump deer. But if people are leaving the woods, it does give you that opportunity to possibly have them bump a deer your way. Even if, I mean, you're not like I said, it's different than like if you're rifle hunting. But they if they just move them off of what they're normally doing, it could kind of send like a them soft bump almost. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not like you're pushing them. Yeah. It's just the deer's like, okay, that there's movement. Something's going on over there that I don't like. I'm going to head this way, and he ends up in your lap. So it, it, it definitely depends on what type of rain you're getting. Yeah, I mean, it's – even a light rain, I'll sit all day in a light rain. I actually – I like hunting in a light rain because deer don't want to lay in a wet bed. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if it's, you know, a steady light rain that's kind of just soaking the ground – the deer is not going to lay in a wet bed all day. It's going to stand up. It might move to a higher spot to bed, but it still has to, it might only be 70 or 80 yards, but still it's, it's moving and Mm -hmm. giving you an opportunity during daylight hours. Yeah. I know. I think your first archery buck was killed in the rain up at camp. I remember because we were, or up in uh, climber. I mean, yeah. So maybe go through that, that story just because I mean, that was, a rainy day buck really yeah, it was it rained all day yeah and it was it wasn't a hard rain it was just a steady literally just yeah what steady. you said you love to be in so yeah and i mean just as an example we i shot that buck give us the whole story we wait i'm just we waited an hour and still had no problem following the blood trail um but anyway i had set myself up it was a morning hunt and on the other side of the road, it's, it's a big open field, and there's a hedgerow that comes through the middle of the field all the way to the road. And the deer like to cross, they, they follow that hedgerow all the way down the field, cross the road, and come into our side to bed down. So I figured, you know, this would be a good spot to set up. I'll set up on our side, even with that hedgerow, catch them cutting across getting into their bed well that's not at all how i killed this deer (laughs) that was the thought process yeah that was my thought process behind it but anyway scrap that idea (laughs) it ended up it ended up working out i got up in my stand and like first light i see this buck chasing a doe out at like 80 yards and i'm like all right that's pretty cool and this is mind you october 24th i think i arrowed this deer so like we're pre-rut you know Mm -hmm. chasing starting to happen and I'm like, all right, you know, not nearly close enough. I could just tell it had headgear. I don't know exactly what it was. So I'm like, yeah, pretty neat. 15 minutes later, I see another buck trail in that same exact trail that the doe just ran down, nose to the ground, grunting. I'm like, all right, there, there's a chase going on this morning. So I watched. Well, roughly what time in the morning was this? It's probably about. Seven thirty, eight o'clock. Okay, it so this early. is pretty early. Okay. Yeah. And the night before I watched this hunting video where this guy was snort <laughs> wheezing bucks. And I'm like, 
Yeah. This is, is this the same time. your stand pots uh, rattle bag too? Didn't you try that trick on this deer oh, too? No, that was a different deer. But I I love that trick. That works wonders. We'll get into that after this story. So I watched this Snortwee's video and I said to myself, you know what? I'm gonna give that a shot. Work so, for that guy. It's gonna work. For yeah. Me. So I let out a couple grunts, like a challenge grunt and a snort wheeze, and totally different buck that I didn't even see comes running. It's right now three down, different bucks. Yeah, running down the hill to me, like ears pinned back, hair on his neck, standing up, like ready to fight. And the only thing was the call worked too good because I brought him in <laughs> head on at like seven yards and I drew back on him and he definitely saw me draw back. So he's like he's staring, staring at me. And so I'm like three quarter draw on this buck and he's just staring at me like seven yards. I'm like, God, this sucks. <laughs> and I'm like starting to tremble, starting to tremble. And I'm like, you know what? I, Either I got to let down or like I can't hold any longer. So this buck's staring at me and I go from three quarter draw to full draw. And buck kind of wigs out a little bit, takes like three steps, stops, looks back at me. And now he's like quartering two slightly. And like as I shot, the deer took off running and I ended up shooting him right actually in front of the front shoulder and got a clean pass through got the what's the the juggler mm. and double lung Smoke. yeah you you passed or you went you exited behind the front shoulder on the other side yeah i went in in front of the front shoulder came out behind the opposite front shoulder yeah so and, and like, like you said it was raining so we you know we wanted to give it enough time but yeah because i wasn't sure i knew i hit him hard but i mean it seven yards because i remember you told us you know you had the tail flicker yeah, and, and as he was running away, I could tell his legs weren't really working. Yeah. So I knew he was pretty messed up, and he was tripping and stumbling, falling as he was running away. So I knew I smoked him pretty good. I had a pretty good idea he was dead. So I texted Nick and Frank and my buddy Joe and said, Hey, just shot a buck. I think I made a good shot. I don't think he's going too far. And they're like, All right, I'm going to meet you at the bottom of your stand. I'm like, No, I'm, I'm just going to wait here for an hour like no need for you guys to climb down and they're like oh no we're, we're, we're climbing down we're gonna come see you i don't i don't think i was hunting i think i had gone in already because it was raining and I was, the rain. yeah i was like i'm i'm not digging it i wasn't because the mud that's me why my skin's so good that was pre-cabin though was it yeah it was it, it was, was, it was, it was pre-cabin so maybe i was that's still bc that. before the cabin <laughs> So they all meet me at the bottom of the stand, and we found first blood and kind of like we Mind said. Mind you, the stand, Tom said he was seven yards. I don't think Tom was more than 10 foot in the air either. It was a very mm. pretty low setup, um, but not a ton of cover. Uh, almost no, none. Yeah, you were in a I, telephone pole <laughs> cherry. <laughs> yeah, that wide, like 10 feet up. So yeah, it was Tom nice. like sat right in the crotch. I, I just remember that part of the story. So anyway, we gave it an hour because we didn't want to give it too long, being that it was, you know, it was a steady rain that morning. Yeah, it wasn't a downpour, but it was steady. But we found my arrow, found good blood. Like I said, waited it out. And it wasn't an insane blood trail, which I wasn't really expecting being where I hit it. <laughs> um, but that's besides the point. It wasn't the shot I wanted, but it's actually not even the shot I took. I put it behind his front shoulder, and I don't really know what happened. <laughs> anyway... Easy track job, not like blood everywhere, but like steady. You take a step, okay, there's blood, there's blood, there's blood. You never had to stop and tie a uh, ribbon to a tree and search for the next spot of blood. And he, I don't know, went maybe 150 yards. If that, it wasn't very far. Mm -hmm. Piled up. He was like right in, like right at the edge of the swamp. He did his his darndest to get back into the swamp. I remember mm -hmm. he died like right in the red brush getting like back into the swamp pretty close to the property line. Mm -hmm. But I've helped people uh, that have hit deer and had good blood, like better than what we had that on your buck there. And it was raining pretty hard and falling. And you can see as you're following it, you're losing that trail just in the short amount of time. And usually if it's a marginal hit, you don't want to go after that deer right away. You want to wait till the next day or, you know, at least if you shoot it in the morning for the evening or whatever, 
But if it's a torrential downpour, even if it's raining pretty hard, you don't have that luxury of waiting. You have to get out there and find it in a hurry because you're not going to have anything to follow if you wait too long. Yeah. And actually, on the same note as that, um, Tom and I, a couple of years back, were up at our buddy's camp. And I think it was another opening day mm-hmm. deal. Um, there was rain in the morning through like early afternoon, and then it quit, but it was supposed to get real nasty um, after dark. Mm-hmm. And I had set up in one area, Tom was in another. I ended up killing a buck, you know, pretty close to dark, and Tom uh, put an arrow in a doe. And like the radar said, we were getting that rain. We started, my buck fell in sight, so we were um, no track, no track and required there, but. Uh, Tom hit a doe, made a good hit, but it where he, where he was at was super thick mm-hmm. and quickly got out of where we could see. And we started tracking and the rain started coming down real hard. And we actually did lose the blood trail. Mm-hmm. But what Tom and our buddy did was went back the next day and grid searched the place, found his doe not far, but just from the rain. Yeah, you couldn't it, see it. You were, you, know, you were within 100 yards of it, but you couldn't. I think Tom, they, they said they were within 20. Yeah. But just a torrential downpour in the pitch black rain or pitch black woods. Yeah. You can't find it. anything. So, but I mean, so that's another thing. Like if you do lose your deer, go back and grid search it. If you're confident with your shot, you know, it's not, it can't be that far. Yeah. So no, that's a big thing too, is like, if it's raining out, I'm not going to take, you know, a 30 yard shot. Yeah. My, yeah. It's, yeah closer, your your closer arrows distance. will even fly different. If you're, if you have feathers or veins, you know, they, when they get wet, they fly different. Yeah, so my range comes in that, yeah. inside, you know, 20, 25 yards uh, where I know I'm going to hit within an inch of no matter what. where I'm aiming. Like, at 20 yards, I'm grouping arrows. Yeah, it's like tough. A, to half dollar. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'll bring my shot in to 20 yards where I know, okay, when I let this arrow fly, it's going right where my pin is. I'm mm-hmm. going to smoke this deer. And I think it's very important to watch your deer until it's out of sight Mm -hmm. because yeah make as strong as a mental note as possible where you last saw it because typically i mean i'm not going to say this is every situation but a double lung deer is not going to go much more than 150 to 200 yards Mm -hmm. and that's like on the high stretching it yeah yeah i've never had a double lung deer go more than 100 yards yeah but i have seen them go like you said out to 200 but yeah for the most part, it's under 100. So, I mean, if you're, you know, hunting the woods, most places you can watch them 60, 70 yards. Mm-hmm. Odds are... Maybe not. Like, yeah, it's not like a clear... Sight. You should be able to catch movement at least 70 yards out. Yeah, and odds are they're not going to be much further than where you last saw them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. that's a, a big thing. I mean, we've... That's where Dad, his buck last year, wasn't in the rain, but he went up to where he last saw it. He wasn't even following blood. He just went up to where he last saw it and it was within 20 yards of where he last saw it. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause the, his, my dad's blood, he didn't get an exit. And yeah. so there was hardly any blood. Mm-hmm. And so he just, you know, that's where I last saw it. Went up to that point, started combing back and forth and found it right away. Mm-hmm. So I that, pretty much did the same thing with my North Carolina buck last year. I shot it out in the middle of a bean field and it's pretty tough to, mark you know like a landmark yeah. out in a, the middle of a field to say okay here's where he was standing so i just watched him as he went to the wood line made a mental note of that and then i walked the wood line and once i found my spot where i saw him looked in the woods and he was 40 yards in there so it definitely helps to take as many mental notes as possible even if it's not like you said if it's not raining yeah. you still should do all that stuff just just best practice yeah. do you have any rainy day bucks no i like i usually don't hunt if it's if it's raining much more than a little because just because i've heard of bad stories from people and oh yeah i know several people that you know were sitting in the pouring rain shot Mm -hmm. at something and never recovered yeah no it's it scares me i i don't like to i think i've shot two deer with not i only shot one deer that it was actively raining when i shot but the Mm -hmm. like it's, I've shot deer, like you said, I've set up while it was raining and then mm-hmm. killed a deer right after it stopped. But I try not to, and like I said before, people make funny and say you're a bitch if you're not going out hunting in the rain, you're not hardcore or whatever. But with a bow, it's, yeah, you got to, you rain. have to think about 
all the other factors that are going on. Just because you're capable of making a shot or doing whatever doesn't mean that the weather or something else isn't going to affect you and change that hunt completely. Well, I mean, I look at it too. If you've got a deer that you've been following for a year or two or even longer, uh, do you want to risk putting a, a lethal shot on that deer None. and not being able to find it? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying that's always going to happen, but that's the risk you're taking yeah. going out and hunting in a downpour. Yeah, I get that you might be able to see that deer, but it may not be worth it. And it's not to me. And in a, in a yeah, total that's downpour. how I feel. I just don't you think owe it. You owe it to the deer to recover it if you're going to shoot it. Mm-hmm. And it's just, I don't know. It, there's plenty of fair or better weather days. Mm-hmm. Or waiting until the rain stops. There's plenty of times where rain stops midday. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. And that's that's what I always try to think of, like, more along the lines of what you were saying, that I may have the opportunity to see this animal today that I want to kill, but am I going to take the risk of not being able to recover it if I do get the shot on it? Mm-hmm. And that that risk outweighs any benefit that it could have for me it just isn't worth it yeah and i think one of the other things like i mean this is off of that but just thinking out loud really with Mm -hmm. hunting in the rain too is how quickly animals can sneak up on you too yeah because with how silent mm -hmm. and well and i guess it's a benefit for you too i know i can sneak in closer to where i think the deer are going to be during the rain or yeah if you're doing a uh, mobile setup you can move in a lot closer without the crunching leaves yeah because you can move through the woods dead silent when it's mm-hmm. raining yeah. and you can, the rain can be used to your advantage for travel for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, but then the deer are a lot quieter too. And yeah. they're all, they're quiet and crunchy leaves. So you really got to have your head on a swivel. Yeah. I I've had plenty of deer sneak up on me like after a rain or if it rained all night. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, Tom's eyes are a lot better than mine when it comes to like catching movement. Mm-hmm. I have a really hard or I guess a bad habit of like when I see deer, it's like go time, like yeah. with a bow. Like it's they usually, I don't for maybe it's just where I set up, but it seems like deer are usually like fifty, sixty yards when I see them at first, and then mm-hmm. it's just go time. Where Tom, like I've hunted with Tom and filmed for Tom, and he's pointing deer out like way off in the distance, and it takes fifteen, twenty minutes for them to come in. Mm-hmm. So the rain just makes that even worse for me. Yeah. So. Yeah, you definitely have to be more of a sight hunter when you're hunting in the rain or right after rain. Yeah. So to recap, like, this this, this is bow season. Um, like I said, torrential downpour, even like a heavy rain, not even a torrential downpour, just like a heavy rain where you're going to get wet. I, I, I don't like to bow hunt. Mm-hmm. When it, if it's a, a light rain, yeah, I'll, I'm out there in a light rain. Um, if, you know, you are hunting and it's a steady rain and you know you double lung it you know you watch your arrow go right behind its front shoulder i wouldn't wait that hour Mm -hmm. um that deer is going to be dead in you know 15 minutes max yeah usually less usually it'll be five minutes yeah about as long as it can go without breathing Mm -hmm. yeah um so i don't i don't think it's worth it to wait the hour Mm-hmm. To, just be just to be safe because you can't be safe in that situation the safe move is to go sooner yeah, yeah before that blood trail washes away now in gun season it's a little bit different typically in gun season you don't get the heavy rainfall like you do in archery you get more snow mm-hmm. which when bad weather comes in during gun season that's one of my favorite times yeah to be out in the woods, especially hunting edge of the woods like a food source or mm-hmm. something because one you know if it's snowing obviously the deer know okay our ground food is getting covered i need to obviously get something to eat because i don't know when my next meal is going to be mm-hmm. and another thing is if it's you know high winds and whatnot deer rely on their senses to survive so if you know they're in the woods and the wind's blowing like crazy and they can't smell anything they can't hear anything they're going to want to be somewhere where at least they can see mm-hmm. so they're going to head to an open field where you know they, they're not going to be able to smell or hear anything but at least they'll be able to see what's out in front of them mm-hmm. and i've had a lot of really good hunts hunting you know cut corn field or a bean field on just a shitty nasty day where you know you really wouldn't want to be in the woods but 
it also does help if you have an enclosed tree stand with a heater. Yeah, that definitely helps. <laughs> Added benefit there. But then again, in gun season, you know. If you yeah, in gun season, I don't mind bad weather at all because. The deer it, don't mind it, it. Yeah, and snow makes it a thousand times easier to track. So mm-hmm. if you're getting snow, then have at it. It doesn't really matter so much. And you're typically, if you're shooting with a rifle, they're, if you have a good shot on it, they're dropping or going 20 yards. They're not doing shit so and it's you know obviously you should always be comfortable shooting your bow yeah um but a lot can happen like shooting your bow where you know maybe you just didn't anchor where you did while you were practicing or you were because you've got a big face mask or gloves on or something yeah Mm -hmm. and something happens where you know you thought you were on the deer you shoot and you're six inches back from where you thought you were with a rifle it's putting the dot on the shoulder and mm-hmm. squeezing the trigger yeah there's no knocking point with a rifle yeah it's a lot easier you're a lot more precise with a rifle it's a lot harder to make a marginal shot mm-hmm. with a rifle if like we all do wait for that broadside shot mm-hmm. in the open you know you should get them every time yeah all right so i guess you know this week by the time you're listening to this that means Bow season is among us this week. No, uh, it's next. No, week. no next like week. It, when this comes out Sunday, it that's won't the start be of a both. new. Won't it'll be, be that week. People oh, can yes. start. Yeah, like yes. that's the week. You know, because Friday, October first, and a lot. Of, some places are already open. Yeah, um, some counties in PA are already open. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, so like two D's open in PA, five C maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so good luck to you guys that are getting out there this week, and make sure when the rain stops, you're getting outside.